story, so I'm just going to jump straight into it. And uh, I guess, uh, why does IRCC assign people's applications to inactive users, and uh, how long has this been going on? Uh, so one of the things that I just want to provide a little bit of clarity on, just because the applicants who've got a, a file in our system are dealing with a chance to come to Canada for economic opportunity to be reunited with their families, I just want to provide reassurance. Uh, every one of the cases that are the subject of the story uh, that, that was published uh, will be processed, uh, and this is an ordinary process that's going through right now. So what happens sometimes with the codes that we use internal to the system that are assigned to someone who, for example, leaves the, de the department, uh, when that person becomes inactive, uh, their code is used to take cases that have similar, similar uh, commonalities to other kinds of files as part of our triage strategy to make sure that those files actually go to the uh, place in our global system that will be able to process it most effectively. Uh, this is part of how we get cases to the area where they're ultimately going to be processed. Even though they may be attached to a code that was formerly tied to an employee, uh, it's very important that we understand uh, that uh, there's not just one employee who has conduct of a file within IRCC's global network from start to finish. There's many people who touch the file over the course of its uh, life in the department, and, and ultimately these will be processed uh, for a decision uh, in accordance with the usual process. So, so essentially these, these numbers are just placeholders? Uh, it's part of a, an inventory management code is the language the department uses for what it's worth uh, after a person loses. But yeah, it, it holds it in a place uh, not just to sit forever, but to actually be moved to the processing facility where the uh, the case will be processed for final decision. Can you understand why some people, though, are feeling like they're sitting forever there? Well, look, I, I can, and I think this is really important because we've made a lot of progress over the course of the last year since I've uh, had the opportunity to serve in this portfolio. Uh, we've advanced a lot of measures to speed up the processing times, whether it's hiring more people, relaxing policies, adopting new technology. Uh, but there's people who've been in the system longer than uh, would normally have been the case pre-pandemic. Uh, we're going to be able to provide a, a really positive update a few days from now, uh, but numbers uh, as of a month ago have seen the actual number of cases in our inventory reduced by more than 300,000. Uh, we're back to the standard of service that we offered before the pandemic for permanent residency for both family reunification and federal class. Uh, study permits just a couple of weeks ago are back to the pre-pandemic service standard, work permits early in the year. Uh, a lot of the measures that we've introduced over the course of the past year have taken hold, and we're starting to see that uh, case bend downwards, or trend bend downwards of the number of cases in the system. So we've got a positive story to tell, but for a lot of people who've been in the system for longer than they should have been, uh, that comes as cold comfort. So I understand that they feel this way, uh, but I want everybody to know that we're doing everything we can to speed up processing times, to get people here more quickly, to be reunited with families, or uh, to help fill a job in the labor market here in Canada. I'll pass it on.